Good morning. How are you? Hope you are enjoying this summit. Welcome to our session, Non-Native English Speakers in Open Stack Community, a true story. And I'm here with my colleagues Masayuki and Tongma. And just to say hello, um, konnichiwa, ni hao, or hola, or simply hello. And let's have a brief introduction. My name is Samuel de Medeiros Queiroz. I am Brazilian. I'm working for SUSE. And I am a Keystone Core reviewer. Hi, uh, I'm Masayuki Igawa. Uh, I'm Japanese and uh, I'm working for SUSE. Uh, I'm an OpenStack QA core reviewer, uh, such as uh, Tempest, uh, OpenStack Health, something like that. Hello, everyone. Uh, I'm Dong Ma. I'm Chinese. Uh, I'm currently working for HPE. Um, I'm active technical contributor uh, of OpenStack project. So in this talk, we are going to share some of our experience, as I said, and we are going to share some challenges we have been facing in the OpenStack community. And we have categorized those challenges into cultural challenges and language-related challenges. We are going to start with the cultural challenges with Masayoki. Okay, thank you. So, yeah, I'm Japanese. So we Japanese actually not tend to say yes or no clearly. So it's very confusing in uh, uh, international communications. So one example is that uh, we have zensho uh, shimasu like this. Uh, we this is the the meaning is uh, actually in the dictionary is uh, I I will do my best, but uh, in many cases the the actual meaning is I do nothing, so it's very <laughs> opposite meaning. So we really need to care about uh, in the international communication. And the second is tend to be perfect. Uh, we tend to be perfect, but uh, as a result, we are really afraid of failures. So we need, uh, actually do nothing in a conversation. We don't speak the other persons in the international communication. It's really bad for the uh, fluent uh, uh, communication. And uh, Third one is uh, we have katakana. Katakana is uh, one of the uh, Japanese uh, words. Uh, we have kanji and the hiragana and the katakana. Uh, the katakana is used for imported words mainly, uh, such as a network, like that. Uh, we use uh, like this. We understand and pronounce this uh, network like that. And we also have the uh, file or comment like this. Uh, but uh, the pronunciation is a bit different. Uh, I try to, in Japanese, uh, we, uh, we say network file uh, comment uh, like that. It's a bit different. So we are really confusing in the uh, conversation, in the English conversation. And we also have the Japanese made English, uh, Pasocon Aircon Autobuy, uh, which means uh, personal computer, air conditioner, and the last one is a motorbike. It's really confusing for us. <laughs> we need to care about that. Uh, okay, I will quickly introduce some challenges from Chinese culture. Um, I think most of the time the Chinese culture are known as uh, Confucian culture, which created by this, this man. Confused. Uh, this culture has very uh, influence on the Chinese character and the behavior. Um, also, we have some Chinese pronunciation based on the, the Chinese pinyin. It's very different with English, so it's not uh, understood by others. Also, we did not follow well with the English grammar. Uh, a small example. Um, Sometimes we meet uh, the friends, we will say hello, hi in English. But in Chinese, we sometimes we say, do you, sorry, ni uh, chi which that mean, do you eat in English? Okay. So now from a Brazilian perspective, I find that conversations are driven in a similar way. However, 
sometimes we get very short or direct response, and that may sound a little bit rude for us. And more related to the language itself, when we compare Portuguese to English, there are some phonemes that do not exist at all in Portuguese. As an example, we have the TH sound, and some Brazilians try to do that and sometimes um, replace it with the F sound, which, which is different. I also find that the regular schools in Brazil do a poor job teaching um, students English, so that you find people finishing the studies in the high school and they, they can't even have a basic conversation in English, even if they have been studying English for several years at that point. And now we are going to enumerate some challenges related to the language itself, to the language skills that are common to, to us. So first one, skill, uh, first skill is uh, reading skill. So reading is uh, the easiest part, but uh, it's really important in the open source community. Um, one example is uh, IRC conversation. We use uh, OpenStack community uses uh, IRC, but uh, it's really f uh, sometimes it's really fast. Uh, so we need to read it uh, first. Otherwise, we cannot follow that conversation. So uh, reading skill is important, and uh, the other is uh, long emails. The, we have uh, um, OpenStack dev mailing list, what that? <laughs> uh, but uh, there's a long emails, but uh, sometimes the conclusion is uh, unclear, so we need to understand the, the emails from that. The second skill is uh, uh, writing. Uh, so our mother language is really uh, different from the English, uh, as we said, uh, so uh, so grammar. Uh, understand the g English grammar is really important, and uh, the other is uh, writing long email and the beautiful sentence is really difficult for us. So we tend to uh, uh, write a simple word and simple sentences. So uh, we need to uh, practice more and uh, speed in IRC uh, we, as we, uh, as I already said. So we need to uh, write as fast. So it's writing a skill is important. The listening skill is pretty interesting, especially in the OpenStack community where for example, in this event, we are being represented by more than 60 countries, and we have a huge variety of accents, and even for a native speaker, sometimes it's hard to get the different accents and um, things. You can even imagine how, it, uh, how it's hard for us. Um, there's also the speed of conversations. We can easily notice that conversations in the forums and discussions go really quick, and it's hard to get everything and sometimes you end up um, missing a very important part of that conversation. And vocabulary and grammar, just to make sure you have um, a good vocabulary so that you can understand what's being said in the conversation because most of the times if you, if you miss a couple of words, you, you may just end up missing the, um, the key part of that conversation. And conversation often happens in noise environments. We also have um, the speaking skill, and it's hard for us. As you can see, you can, we have an accent, of course, and um, it may be hard for native speakers to understand sometimes. We have been working on that, trying to make it better, and that's the pronunciation. And we also have the vocabulary and grammar, so that we can make sure we use the grammar appropriately. For example, Masayuki did not mention in this talk, but um, the way you form the sentences in Japanese is um, completely different in the way you make the sentences in um, Japanese, in, in English. So now we are going to share a few tips for um, both non-native English speakers and native speakers to make the process of onboarding communities easier. Yes, um, for the non-native English speakers, we have some tips. Uh, first, it be friendly uh, to uh, try to find friends and uh, mentors. 
Um, the mentors can help you with both the communi communication skills and uh, technical things. Also to try to share your opinion um, and uh, ask questions as much as possible. The last one is brush up your English skills. Um, for native English speakers, we also have some tips. First is be patient. I know sometimes you will be um, feel very difficult to communicate with the non-native English speaker, but uh, should, you should be patient. It will make them comfortable. Uh, next one is please uh, speak very slow, slowly, especially for the group discussions. Um, try to use simple sentence and uh, words to uh, uh, make make this easy to understand. And the last one is the most important: do not make fun of them. Yeah. Thank you.